Good evening, everyone. I'm Grant Boone alongside Zach Carlisle. Welcome to Wildcat basketball and a night unlike any other in ACU athletics history. You guys got me? You enjoyed the moment. Everybody understand? You ready? Yeah. Sir? Let's go, man. Arguably the greatest athletic moment in the history of Abilene Christian. I'm telling you, this is game is going to be a blast. Tonight, with a victory, the ACU men's basketball team can go into uncharted territory. They can go to the big dance, the biggest of big dances to the NCAA tournament with a victory. The senior mindset was really just, we're this close, this is what we've been working for. We can't give it up. We treated them like they were, I mean, the best team in the nation. It was just attention to detail in every single player, no matter who. So we were ready. I remember three times saying to them all, I don't want this to be my last game with you. Like, I want to play another game with you, and I want to do it on a big stage. Like, the look in their eyes when, when I said that, it was just kind of like, okay, let's go. Like, let's go to war. Break Trust the process, everybody got me? That it's this team that gets to make history. Chief Frank, all the way, rises up for the shot. God! The Southland Tournament champions for the first time ever. Quarter three, yes! The 15 seed Wildcats. Uh, we're going to be who we are, go out there and, and uh, embrace it. They can feel it all over ACU Nation. Twenty nineteen was a record breaking year for both of Abilene Christian University's men's and women's basketball teams highlighted by each program's first ever trip to the NCAA tournament. But just as each etched their place in ACU history in the same year, their journeys to the top could not have been more different. The last 25 years for the ACU women's program has been exemplary, success on every level. The last quarter century for the men's program has been the opposite. I think ACU's always had a history in basketball. Um, I think the thing about it um, is we've never had consistency uh, within our within a, within the men's basketball program, um, and so we obviously had a lot of success back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and I think maybe in the early 80s, um, and then we went for a period of time right there that there just wasn't any consistent um, success. In the previous 20 years. There'd only been one winning season period. Winning meaning one game above 500. And then Joe Golding came along. Joe Golding as a head coach is very much like Joe Golding, the basketball player. I called his games back in the mid 90s. I was only out of ACU a couple of years. He was a part of the last sustained run of good play in men's basketball for 20 years until he brought ACU men's basketball back to the top. This was a guy that just uh, was about the sum of his parts, not the individual part. And he probably knew that while you might be a better player than he was, he was just going to work harder than you. And so he led the league in floor burns and, you know, diving into the stands to get balls. That was just the way he played. And, and then he became a coach. After graduating in 1999, Joe Golding rose up the high school and junior college ranks over the next several years before returning to ACU in 2005 as an assistant coach under Jason Copeland. Golding joined head coach Steve Shields at Arkansas Little Rock, helping the Trojans to the Sun Belt Conference title. After the conference title, Golding found himself as one of the top candidates to take over the recently vacated head coaching position at his alma mater in Abilene. 
ACU's newest head coach didn't quite last as long as some might have hoped. Not even four months after being hired to turn the Wildcat men's basketball program around, Grant McCaslin stepped down to take an assistance job at Baylor University. I was on the committee when, when we were hiring a coach back in 2011, and, and we hired Grant McCaslin. And, um, he would have been great, and Joe was, was the number two guy on the list. I, I remember I was at the baseball field, and Joe called me and said, hey, what's, my, you know, what, what's going on? And I just told him, you know, Grant's left. I think, you know, you need to be ready to get a phone call. ACU was quick to hire a new coach, Joe Golding. A former player and assistant coach, Golding has no previous collegiate head coaching experience, but was a part of former head coach Jason Copeland's staff. The fact that he didn't get the job first, he was crushed. I know he was. Uh, but I think the chance to come back here to his you know, home away from home, a place that, that he loves, meant a lot to him. Taking over the program, um, you know, it kind of was, was an awkward time. Uh, I didn't get the job until August. Um, and so, you know, the team had already been built and, and Grant um, had done a good job of that. And then obviously he had gone on to Baylor. And so uh, I, I don't know if there's ever a perfect time to take over a job. Uh, you never know when it's coming, but it wasn't ideal. Joe Golding inherited maybe the worst Division II men's basketball program in America, one of them at least. I wouldn't say our program was 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 great. You know, I think it was uh, I think it was towards the bottom uh, of the Lone Star Conference at that time. Um, and uh, obviously, there was a lot of work that had to be done. Julie Goodenough is a a West Texas legend as a player and as a coach. Great player, great student. She's been great at everything she's done. A 1991 graduate of Texas Arlington, Julie Goodenough was the head coach at Hardin Simmons University from 1993 to 2002, and a conference champion at the NAIA D1, D2, and D3 levels. Coach Goodenough's culture um, is probably ingrained for her from the beginning of her career. And she won countless, countless amount of championships at the NCAA level and the NAIA level when they transferred. And from there, she went to Oklahoma State. Just two completely different cultures um, that she was kind of starting from scratch. It was just, it was just tough sledding for her, and she lasted three years. And it was probably the first time she'd ever had any semblance of professional, certainly professional struggle. Obviously, it didn't work out the way she wanted to at Oklahoma State, but I think she sees the silver lining in everything, and it helped her build her culture and the way she wants to present a program. Then she goes to Charleston Southern, and she's there six years, and she makes them into a conference contender and, and gets the call to come back to West Texas from Jared Mosley. Uh, you know, we'd like to be uh, one of the top teams in the league, be able to, get, to go to the NCAA tournament, Division II. So that will really be our main focus and try to decide what we need to do for our program to be competitive. In the years prior to Julie Ace, you didn't shoot many three-pointers. We had great inside players. We had good wing players who would drive to the basket, scored almost all of our points inside. And we were good enough to go to the NCAA tournament doing it that way. Julie good enough comes in and says, I want threes. I want layups and I want free throws. And there was something significant about it. It was like, whoa, this is not, you know, this is not, this not only is not your, your grandfather's ACU women's basketball, it's not your big sister's ACU women's basketball team. It, it, it was huge. And for me as a broadcaster, it signaled this seismic shift in the way that ACU women's basketball was going to play. It was a different style. When Dr. Phil Schubert became the 11th president of Abilene Christian in 2010, one of the first things he did was commission then athletic director Jared Mosley to explore a move to Division I. Jared started writing just paper after paper uh, that Phil wanted of uh, information and, and um, rankings and how, how this would look and budgets and, and that kind of thing. And, he wanted to just make sure, are we doing this right? Is this where we need to be? And the conclusion that 
uh, this exhaustive study came to was that ACU would be better positioned because of who we are academically being in Division One. It always kind of been talked about, uh, but to be quite honest with you, even since I played here uh, back in the early 90s, there had always kind of been whispers about one day ACU could go to Division One. I. I really thought it would never happen. It's been talked about for so long. So from the moment that study was commissioned and word got out that there was a massive exploration involving every area of the university into ACU possibly becoming Division I, there was a huge buzz on campus. August of 2012, the Southland Conference came to Abilene and uh, they had a contingent of, of athletic directors and presidents and uh, Tom Burnett, the commissioner of the conference, came to Abilene and toured the, toured the campus and had meetings with coaches and, and talked a lot about you know, their vision and, and what they were looking for. And I think when they left there, we knew that we were gonna get the call from the Southland Conference to be a part of that league. And, it, and that, was, that was quite frankly pretty exciting. It was something that, that Jared had worked long, long hours on leading up to that. I want to welcome all of you here and all of you watching online uh, on this great day in Abilene Christian University history. Uh, honestly, uh, from a head coach's standpoint, there wasn't a, we really didn't know. It kind of caught us out of the blue. Uh, we were just warned that I think there was a press conference. And so uh, all of a sudden, here we go. We go to a press conference and we have balloons and Willie the Wildcats there and we're going to Division One. We are absolutely thrilled to be back uh, on a campus that was a former member, in fact, an original member of our conference. I mean, there must have been a thousand or 15, 2,000 people there. And it was a great, great atmosphere and a great day for HC Athletics. Um, Dr. Schubert, do you want to come up? Um, on behalf of the Southland Conference Board of Directors, I want to invite you officially to join the Southland Conference on July 1, 2013. Thank you. It's certainly an honor to uh, have received the invitation. And we're proud of that. We, we do think it, it uh, is a statement of the kind of university that ACU is, uh, the characteristics and the things that we offer to be able to, to achieve an invitation from the conference in Division I and specifically Southland is something that we think reflects well on the university. We think there are so many aspects to ACU uh, that are great. Certainly we believe that, but it's always nice to have some external validation. Uh, this certainly has been uh, that kind of process. As exciting as the overall prospect of going Division I was for all of the many reasons. And again, the deeper reasons really weren't just about sports, it was about proper positioning kind of as a university. The first thing you think about if you're a sports fan and your school is going Division I, you think basketball. College World Series is awesome. The FCS playoffs, really cool, but there is Nothing like the NCAA basketball tournament. Nothing. As excited as we were for all sports, everybody was thinking, maybe one day. March Madness, could it be? Now that ACU had officially achieved Division I status, the task of recruiting the next wave of players for both programs began with some challenges that would take time to overcome. In those first couple of years of the transition, when ACU was moving into Division I, trying to learn the Southland Conference, Joe was just trying to hang on for dear life most nights. In terms of, of talent, ACU was outmatched every single night. I remember it wasn't even Stephen F. Austin, it was Sam Houston State came to Moody Coliseum that first season and they had guys that just, we didn't have anybody that looked like physically just like the, their guys. I mean, they had six, eight, six, nine guys and we, you know, we just didn't have that. And I looked at Grant and I thought, I said, you know, I don't know that we're ever gonna get there. And then in the 2014-15 school year, the Wildcats hit the skids and really struggled. And there were some serious questions about whether Joe Golding was gonna keep his job. And that was not much of a secret. And the record wasn't great. But people who were close to the program, who had been around a while, realized where ACU men's basketball had been. They realized what kind of person Joe Golding was. They realized that he bled purple. He had played 
at ACU. He had really, as he says, grown up as a man at ACU. And, and he cared about ACU men's basketball in a way that few people could if you didn't really come from here. You know, Joe and Brett and those guys, um, they worked their tails off uh, on the recruiting trail. And they just, they just kept working and working hard and, and bringing in guys that fit what Joe wanted, what Joe and Brett's vision for this program was. And that was to go recruit guys of high quality character and, and guys who would, would fit with ACU and fit in academically and spiritually. And then we began hearing talk about some studs that he had, had found. Hayden Farquhar, uh, he was a kid that was obviously from Throckmorton, America. We like to say a small uh, town about an hour uh, from Abilene. He played everything at his high school. Played, I think he played four or five sports uh, while he was in high school. Seeing Fark in this, uh, in this big uh, truck and with loud pipes on it, and I'm like, man, who is this guy? <laughs> Yeah, you played basketball, you played some football. You're musically gifted too, I hear. Tell me about that. Um, I was drum major at our high school for two years and I played the trombone. I mean, I wouldn't say I was, I'm gifted, but. <laughs> I but just, you were present. And then, I was there. Uh, yeah, and, and that counts for sure. Well, let's, uh, uh, he just played so hard. Um, he had a great motor, he had a great passion for the game, and he obviously could really shoot the ball at a high level. Um, and so we thought that in time, um, we thought he could be a Division One player. Jaron was, was different in the sense we didn't know a lot about Jaron. He was out in Florida, in Orlando, played for a really good AAU program that that's, produces uh, Division I players. Uh, we just saw the potential in Jaron. You know, at the time, he had won state championships as well uh, at, at that program. And then his senior year, he actually played some at the point. He was just so skilled for his size. Sometimes we forget about Hayden Howell was part of that class um, because he unfortunately had to take a medical register that year. Uh, but he was as, as, we were as excited about Hayden Howell as we were any of those other guys. Um, and I think sometimes unfairly he gets kind of left out of that group. Uh, he was just as big a part of that class as, as those other three as well. I saw Jalen for the first time in Tulsa and I watched him for about five seconds and got on the phone with Coach and said, man, like I don't care who you're watching right now, get in the car and drive over here. I think it was a small church, like it was a back gym. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of people there. There was like two other Division One coaches there. And so I just said, hey, man, like, I don't, whatever you're doing, get in the car, get over here. This is the guy. He kind of re reached out to me like, hey, man, we want you to come play for us. Man, you're pretty good, and you, we're trying to change the program. And I was like, okay, uh, where is this at? He said, Abilene. I was like, Abilene what? He was like, Abilene, Texas. I was like, oh, I don't know where that is. I know Jalen from way back that he very much fits ACU, which is what Coach Golding and Coach Tanner um, had a vision of doing, was trying to recruit guys to fit the mission and the purpose of Abilene Christian University and on top of that being good basketball players and um, Jalen was the perfect fit for a senior point guard that you know started for four years and um, was a, the biggest part in my opinion of changing this program around. You could tell it was going to take time we were a couple years away but you, you could tell that we finally had the building blocks for a division one program. They were big and they were tough and they could jump out of the gym and they Oh, they, they're good students. They're great students in some cases. And they're, they're great people. This is almost too good to be true. And so sure enough, Joe is retained as head coach. And the buzz for that freshman class was unlike anything I can remember in ACU men's basketball. And really in few other sports that I can remember at ACU. And more than anything else, with the arrival of those four guys, being the kind of human beings and students that they were, it was a signal that ACU men's basketball was no longer the doormat of the Southland Conference. In the history of ACU athletics, there have been few recruiting classes that rival the one that Julie Goodenough brought in for the 2013-14 school year. That recruiting class that Julie brought in, the Dimba Twins, Lex, Sid, may be as talented a group as any coach has ever brought in in any sport in ACU history. And in terms of wins, has to be as prolific as any class 
Before I ever got to HCU, I knew of the championship culture that was being built at Abilene Christian. To see the Dimbas and Alexis Mason be as talented as they were, it, it was pretty amazing. And then and then people sometimes forget Sydney Shelstead, but I definitely do not. Our culture of championships does not happen without a great post player, and Sydney was dominant. Finds Shelstead. Tough move on Stewart. Well, how about that? The Dimbas hated to lose and didn't want any part of it. And it was amazing to watch. Susie Dimba finishes and won. Here comes Susie Dimba driving right baseline underneath off the glass and in. From the moment they got to ACU, you realized a very good program had just become potentially great. On the way from Mason, it'll count if it goes, it's good! It's good! Mason buries the three-pointer! This was a, a, a team that had been building for a couple of years, and then they absolutely ran roughshod through the Southland Conference. Underneath the Lizzie, catch, score, and she's fouled. Big bucket from Lizzie. Dimba from up top. Gives ACU the lead back. He gets the rebound. Mason pushes it down. Court shells it. Catch off the glass and in. They bought into Coach Good enough. They bought into the culture that she wanted, and she bought in. And they bought into ACU and what the ACU family and community stood for. And then they embodied everything about it. Those four deciding to come to ACU, knowing that they would never play in the NCAA tournament has set the culture of championships. That phenomenal freshman class from 2013-14 with 80 some odd wins over over four seasons and they never got to go to the NCAA tournament but they they did something that few teams do and that is in a transition period establish a foundation of excellence. In 2017-18, Joe Golding's team was in position to make the Southland Conference Tournament for the first time. But he would be the first to tell you they didn't handle that pressure very well. Cross court stolen, and a run out by Kilgore. He's going to slam it home, and that may do it. You know, I don't know what it was. Sometimes you're just not ready for it yet. You know, ready for it as players, ready for it as a coach. Um, you know, but for whatever reason, we went through that stretch, and we didn't have success. Good. The stick back is good. Good from Unruh, and the game is over, and Central wins it. And the 13th offensive rebound for Central Arkansas may be the death knell for ACU. Yeah. You know, I think the hardest thing to do in college athletics is make the jump from the middle of the pack to get to the top of the pack. And that's where we were at. We were at the middle of the pack, and we were trying to make the jump, you know, to get in the top, uh, top two or three. And the Wildcats are on the ropes in their bid to get to the Southland Conference Tournament. I think it, looking back, it was probably the best thing that happened to us. You know, I think um, it's so hard to win at this level. There's so much, and, and you have to earn everything. It's not given to you. We did win our final game of the regular season to finish 16 and 15. And it meant more than anything that we were going to be eligible to go, to go to a postseason tournament. We didn't think there was going to be a crowd. It ends up being packed and a great atmosphere. And Drake had a really, really good team that year in the Missouri Valley. And it was, a, it was an incredible game. And we're down most of the game. Rally in the final minute. Force overtime. Lose a close game. But we left Iowa thinking, OK, that was significant. To beat Incarnate Word, to get the winning record, to be able to go to the CIT tournament, some kind of postseason, to give those guys a little bit of a taste. You knew with all those guys coming back as seniors. This team had a chance to be something way better than average. With a combination of promising youth and experienced upperclassmen, the expectations the following season were high. You know, the, the year before, when we, we came up just short, you know, of the conference tournament, me and Coach had both been through it before, and it's kind of like you can almost see it the year before it happens. And so we wanted to challenge ourselves. So obviously day one, we're off to a good start. Everybody got here on time, and we got started early, okay? 
that's one of the main things we had from that year when we had that tiebreaker into guys transferring over that other year, man. They just wanted to work a little bit harder, man. Losing hurts, um, not making the tournament hurts. Um, you know, so we kind of came in that year with a chip on their shoulder. At least the players did for sure. Man, so um, when, you, when guys work hard, man, you get the results um, from Jaron Lewis especially. Um, he was just, he was in there every single day uh, as far as getting workouts, man, it just spread to everybody else, man. So um, the chemistry is there and the work ethic. Um, if one player is working out, other players feel they need to work out as well. But um, over the summer as a, as a staff, um, we kind of came up with our own expectations and it was to not to put so much pressure on our guys to go to postseason, to go to the KD. We didn't talk about KD the entire year. We didn't talk about it in the summer. We didn't talk about the tournament. We feel like we tried that the year before um, and we just tried to focus more on the process and doing stuff every single day. Reality kicks in, you know, during that time. And as you just mature as a man, you start to understand how valuable um, and how how much you appreciate the game of basketball, man. So I think that kind of hit in all, in all form and fashion for those guys. Following a rebuilding season in 2017, the ACU women focused their efforts on returning to the top of the Southland Conference, even if it was almost a year away. We knew we were gonna have a young group, and so this season our expectations were a lot higher. Um, because we were bringing back more returners, we had more experience, and we decided the first week of practice, which for us is in June, um, that we wanted to go and win the conference tournament. We knew we had the pieces to build on the championship culture. In June, we set out to win the Southland Conference Tournament Championship. So we started talking about that in June, even though it was like, you know, nine months away. But we knew that every day after we established that goal, that every day was about um, what, what do we want the end of the season to look like. So we begin with the end in mind. We had come off of a quote unquote down year um, after not winning a championship, um, but it was our rebuild year. We had so many players graduating. Um, so we were rebuilding um, and trying to figure out how to win with this new group of players. In June, we start seeing leaders emerge on our team through our weight training, through their leadership at camp, through basketball workouts. And so that we start, you know, having leaders emerge in the summer so that we're not trying to figure it out when non-conference games start. Alexa Duque had just sat out um, for her redshirt year and she had dominated um, our practices in the post. Um, so we knew what kind of player we were going to get from her. Uh, we added really good pieces um, um, with freshmen. Like we knew Maddie Miller was going to be really competitive right away. Um, and it turned out that we were right. We start really building that culture and that foundation so that when we go into games, we know what we want it to look like and we, we know what we're trying to represent. Going into the year, I think everybody thought that we had a really good shot um, not just to get to the tournament, but to do really well in the tournament, both men and women. So many starters back, um, so, many, so many really good players on both teams. Um, I know Julie was not very happy about where she was picked in the preseason poll, but that, you know, that, obviously that didn't matter. Even though the women's program had won the Southland Conference regular season title two of the last three seasons, when the preseason rankings were released in July, Julie Goodenough's team found themselves picked to finish sixth overall, which did not sit well with the staff or the players. We really saw ourselves as a top three team in the conference, so there wasn't a whole lot as a coaching staff that we had to say. You know, Sarah and, and our upperclassmen, they took that as a challenge, that we were not the sixth best team in the Southland Conference. Um, I think it was a little bit defeating to see that we got picked six, but it also kind of like fuel the fire for us and so all season we just wanted to prove people wrong and you know it just it makes me smile because I, I love to have that underdog uh, mentality and definitely gives you some great bulletin board material when you can tell your team hey nobody expects us to do better than six you know they expect us to be right in the middle and so uh, definitely um, you know fueled our team and fueled our staff you know to to continue pushing our players and holding them to, to high standards um, just so that we could do something that half our conference didn't think that we could do. Coach, uh, just in general, how ready uh, is this team to start the season? I think we're ready. 
I do think there is a sense of urgency as us as a staff and the players uh, for, for them to, to win at the highest level. You know, when we said when we got in this, we wanted to compete uh, for Southland Conference championships, and I think we're getting closer to doing that. Good evening, everybody. I'm Grant Boone. Welcome to a new season of ACU Hoops and one quite unlike any other in ACU history. As the Wildcats entered their sixth season at the Division I level, the expectations had gone from finding a way to compete to expecting to win every night. Hey, from the jump, everybody go! Hey, from the jump, let's get on man, all right? Little by little, trust the process. Everybody get me? Let's go out again, let's go! Instead goes to Ricks, he'll try a three. Yes, Peyton Ricks. Ricks has 13 to lead. AC goes up and slams it home. And it's Hippler who's going to launch a three-pointer. It's good. <laughs> Steal by Farquhar, and he's got a run out. Peyton Farquhar slams it home with two Ricks hands. Big Friday, country, Friday, they call it. Three. Big shot from Kalani Friday. Lobs for Franklin, and he slams it home. Jalen Franklin, the alley oop slam dunk. Um, I, I think looking back on that, um, you know, we got off to such a great start that year, but I think you could tell right there our program was moving in the right direction and we were having a chance to, to compete at a high level. After completing a perfect 3-0 November start, the Wildcats found their first challenge on the road in California at the Tigers Thanksgiving Classic, hosted by the University of Pacific. Honestly, you know, the Pacific game was the game that you're not supposed to win, you know, if, if everybody's looking at it. And, uh, but we felt like we did have a chance to compete with the West Coast Conference team, we, and, and we felt like we could go out there and, and win some games. After Pacific tied the game at 71 with just under 10 seconds to play, Joe Golding handed the ball to his best playmaker, Jalen Franklin. Seven seconds to go, six, five seconds to go, crosses half court, J. Frank, four, three, J. Frank, all the way, rises up for the shot. God, go to the buzzer! J. Frank, from 12 feet, buries it to win the game at the buzzer! That, I think winning that game, that first Pacific game was kind of the, okay, we can do this, you know, like we, we are, we are what everybody's kind of saying we are. We got the rebound in the last three, uh, three seconds, seconds, and coach called my number. I just said, I, uh, I'm going for the jumper. And nothing but net. And so that's when we started getting some attention. There wasn't very many undefeated teams left in, in the country, and so we were on a small list of like eight or nine teams. Uh, so we were getting national recognition for that. Uh, I think that's where that game took us, you know, to another level. I don't know that, I don't know that Julia and Erica and, those, and, the, and their staff gets enough credit for really, I mean, going from up here with Lizzie and Susie and Alexis, and I, not down to the bottom, but you take a step back and then boy, you're right back to the top. You knew with Bree as a junior, Dom as a junior, Sarah Williamson as a senior, and a couple of other players who had come along uh, as underclass women, you knew this was going to be uh, a, a team that was have to be reckoned with. Everyone be in it, okay? Keep the ball at that end. Force them to call a timeout before it ever crosses half court. Go get the tip. Let's go. Be aggressive right here. Team first wins on three. Own it on six. One, here two, come three. the Wildcats the other way. One on two break. Off balance shot. Good with the left hand. Sarah Williamson. She'll launch a three pointer. Yes. A rare chance to run to the hoop with an and one. A quick three-pointer, good! Like the men, the women's program breezed through the month of November as well, as they headed out for their first non-conference test against New Mexico State, a game that Julie Goodenough's team fully expected to win. New Mexico State, uh, they're perennial WAC conference champions. They go to the NCAA tournament on a regular basis. Our team did a great job preparing for that matchup. Uh, for us to be able to handle a quality opponent like that on the road was huge and it was our first game on the road so it gave us this confident that, confidence that hey we can win at home but now we know we can win on the road. 
The Wildcats made a statement, winning handily 58-46, setting up for an SEC matchup against Arkansas at home the following week. Well, the weather outside is a little frightful here in West Texas. The snow is falling, some icy conditions, but inside Moody Coliseum, we are heating up for women's college basketball. The, the Arkansas, Arkansas game Razorbacks was huge for us as well. A game that, or an opponent that, you know, we probably should not have been able to compete with just because of their athleticism and, um, you know, it's SEC school, but our players did a tremendous job. They're just showing a lot of courage in that game. Williamson with some contact yes, yes. and the foul. We proved that we can compete with an SEC team, and I think that that's an incredible accolade to have. Uh, we put up a really good fight. I wish we could have played them as a team that we were at the end of the season because that was definitely a team that I think that we gave them a really good run. Down court to Williamson in transition, and ACU makes it a 9 0 run. After we played in that game, it kind of just made me realize, like, wow, like, we can actually be Southland Conference champions, like, if we keep playing like this. The Wildcats competed through three quarters with Arkansas, proving that they could play with teams of that caliber. Golden active, get some contact and a kick out for a wide open three. It's a final from Abilene, Texas, Arkansas. They hand Abilene Christian its first home loss of the season, 80 to 68. People who came, I think that um, they were proud of their team today. Uh, standing ovation at the end was pretty cool. That was um, good. Yeah, glad to see all the fans come out. It was awesome. Well, it was a great day for Abilene Christian. It was a great day for Abilene. Texas. I just remember after that game, Coach Goodenough came to the locker room and she was like, uh, you played a really good team from a really good conference for three straight quarters. And if you can do that, then you can win a conference championship. As the calendar changed to December, Joe Golding's team headed to Lubbock to face a familiar foe, the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Welcome to ACU Wildcat Basketball. Tonight, it is game number 11 of the ACU men's basketball season against the number 11 ranked team in all of Division I college basketball, the Texas Tech University Red Raiders. That game at Tech was set up to be the last game ever in that Coliseum, which was really neat for me. I grew up in, obviously in Midland, Texas, and went to James Dickey and Gerald Myers basketball camps there. There was a belief, um, not only from our side, but, but even from the Texas Tech side, that, that we could come in there and we could compete. Friday rises up for a three. Yes! There's a drive by Moretti and a foul on Davide in a basket. Boy, a strong move. To, to go play in front of a sold out crowd where you had a ton of ACU fans, I think was a big step for our program. I think I knew right then that our program is, was starting to arrive, uh, that our program was starting to get respect and, and people, we were starting to validate our program on the floor about what we were building and what we were doing. And count the basket for Jaron Lewis. Even though ACU kept within reach in the first half, they were no match for the Red Raiders, led by future NBA lottery pick Jarrett Culver, who finished the game with 30 points in just 27 minutes. Guns up, three ball. He's got 23. Culver, I think I still give Coach uh, Beard a hard time. I think we gave May Culver the other NBA. That was kind of his coming out. You want to line up against that guy. You want to try to shut him down um, just to see where your game is at, man. The best players bring out the best in you. So I think that's a part of it, man, that they really accept him, man. But so um, I think they accepted that challenge, man, but he's just, he's really, he's really good. <laughs> he got game. I think throughout conference play, the Big 12 is always on ESPN, and our guys are always watching. They were watching Texas State beat Kansas, and I think it kept validating to them that they they belong. Um, I think they continue to gain confidence from that from that moment. Wildcats game opponents in the first half. Red Raiders pull away in the second. The women's next test also came against Texas Tech in what would turn out to be their toughest matchup of the regular season. Christian Wildcats as Dominique Golately, Brianna White, Sarah Williamson, Michaela Mabry, and Lexi Duque will go for them at the starting position and the usual five. I think that was a that was a turning point in our season. Uh, I think we were a little bit nervous going into it, more so than we let on. To handle that pressure. We'll get the ball into Sanders. Sanders down low to Brittany Brewer. The Lady Raiders dominated ACU on all fronts, highlighting key weaknesses. 
the steal. She's got a two on one behind the back pass, back to Carr, up and good. And that's Boy, Chris it just exposed some of the problems we were having with our team and some confidence issues and our readiness to play against any opponent on any given night. But it turned out to be a really valuable experience because we got our teeth kicked in by a Big 12 team and then ended up you know, facing a huge Big 12 giant in the NCAA tournament. After learning valuable lessons in December, both programs turned their focus to conference play as the new year arrived. The basket in a tie game. Yes! He's got it out to Ricks and a three-pointer. Got hit and he scores and a chance. And a four-point play. You could just see that one coming off the high screen. It's their ball. We're scoring first. Get it done right at this end. Let's go. Down the left side of the lane, fakes the pass and lays it up with the left hand. She's got 11. Just after the halfway point of the conference season, it seemed as though both teams were starting to hit their stride. That's a hunt. That's a hunt. Gonna give his team another chance, and Jelani Friday finishes with a flush. The senior Lewis up in the air, scores, and he's fouled. Wow. It's really hard for other teams to probably scout us or guard us just because we have so many um, just really good players who obviously like, everybody's like averaging double digits like almost in our starting lineup. <laughs> um, our end goal of course is we want to win conference championship and that's been our goal since way back whenever we met in, in the summer. And, like as long as we get better with every single game that we play I think that we can be pretty competitive in the tournament. Hey, let's do this today, okay? Let's get it done. Let's play Wildcat basketball right here today. San Antonio finds Williams into the corner, more of a driver, as you see there, Great than day. a three-point shooter, and Williamson will have a chance at an and one. February saw both programs on track to not only make the conference tournament, up for the shot. God. but for each team to earn a top four around. seed. Daniel chases it down and goes to Pleasant, who flushes it home. Love for Franklin, he slams it home. Maxwell for three. Oh, that's a big one. Time. That's his second. For the men's program, all roads to a top seed would go through undefeated Sam Houston State in what looked to be a preview of the Southland Conference Championship game in Katy. Welcome to Moody Coliseum in Abilene, Texas for the game of the night in the Southland Conference. Sam Houston State, 10-0 and in first place, taking on second place, Abilene Christian at 8-2, 19-4. Yeah, it's a big game because, I mean, they were first and we were second at the time and just the lead up to it was like, it was nerve wracking, but coaches said, don't worry about it, just let the chips fall where they fall. We, we really just wanted to pay them back for the first time they got us. And uh, we just didn't want that same thing to happen. But honestly, if you watch the game, the same exact thing happened. And another turnover by ACU, their third in the first three minutes. Transition three is good, and Joe Golding wants a timeout. Just that first half, like us not scoring and us getting scored on, like it just, it was just dead. Marcus Johnson. Here's a flush by Smith. All Sam Houston State in the first half. They lead ACU 37 to 23. Just at halftime, coaches told us, man, we t I told you just to stay confident and just stay humble and just uh, stay focused. And Franklin goes up and makes it in with the left hand. Down by eight under the basket. Lewis lets his man go by and he's got his first bucket of the game. It's a six point game. We just went out the second half and played our game and it really showed. Maxwell rises up for three. Big one. It's a two point game. Lewis gives ACU its first lead since the first minute of the game. 48-47 Abilene Christian. They've come from 21 down to take the lead. The fans were amazing. Fans were yelling. I, I don't think I've ever heard Moody that loud. I had never seen like Moody that fat. They were yelling defense and clapping. I was like, shoot, like this is what it feels like to be on top of the game like this. With just seven seconds remaining, Sam Houston guard Marcus Harris had a chance to put the game away 
with two free throws. Marcus Harris one of two at the line, but the miss, he got the rebound from. Well, assuming he doesn't get his own rebound here, then AC may have a chance. Just to make it a three-point lead. Yeah, so Golden calls a timeout. We all go to the huddle. Uh, he's, staying, he's uh, you know him. He's, uh, he's over there nervous about what he's going to call. And uh, <clears throat> he's like, let's do it. Let's just go for it. And he looked at me. He was like, you're going to take the shot. I was like, all right, let's see what happens. So, uh, but I, I trusted him. I trusted the play, and I knew it. I knew it worked because we can't guard in practice when we try to guard in practice. So. How about this? ACU puts five, all five players out of bounds. 7.8 seconds. ACU needs a three. Peyton Ricks across half court. And he just pulled up that shot. He stopped it, pulled back. Like just seeing it leave his hands, I was like, it's good. And all I was thinking was, man, it looked good. When I let it go, I couldn't tell. I thought it was going left. But then like I kind of I kind of just stayed there for a second. I was like, it's kind of like working its way back in there. Ricks to tie it. Good look. Yeah! And it's in. Peyton Ricks is tied the game. And, <laughs> and he hit it. I was like, whoa. When it went in, it was just like, shoot, like <laughs> it went in. And I saw there was still time on the clock. And like I, I immediately saw everybody running towards me. And I was like, no, like. Stay up. Like, if they get the ball, like, half court, throw up a shot, they can make the same crazy shot, so. And I, I ran straight to him, and he was, point, he was pointing to, like, get back on D, get back on D. But I was like, man, forget D. <laughs> I said it's only, like, 0.3 seconds on the clock. There ain't no way they get the shot up. We're going to overtime. Big time shot, Peyton Ricks. Peyton Ricks. With his fourth three of the game. Sends us to overtime. It was an amazing moment, you know, you know, very exciting. It was just crazy. It was a surreal moment. I'll always remember that. Despite Rick's heroics, the top seeded Bearcats pulled away in double overtime, all but locking up the top seed in the conference. And the game's over. Sam Houston State in double overtime defeats Abilene Christian 90 to 85 to stay perfect in the Southland Conference and to hand ACU their first home loss of the season. Uh, man, that's one game I wish we could have back, but at the same time, uh, I feel like everything happens for a reason, and uh, you can take a lesson from anything that happens in life, and I think that was one of those lessons. You know, we, we had our chances in games. That's the one thing that didn't happen. Everybody came to see us win, and that's what they do. They come to see you win games, and we got to win games like that. But uh, we got to continue to win on the road and continue to set up bigger games down the road here for us. Despite the loss, ACU was a near lock to make the conference tournament. But unforeseen news the following week would threaten the Wildcats' bid to compete for a top two seed in Katy. Everything was set up for ACU in the final month of the regular season. Then mid-February happens and two of ACU starters, Jelani Friday and B.J. Maxwell, were dismissed from the team by the university's administration. Abilene Christian University has dismissed two of its players from the school's basketball team. And that is your top story today. At Juniors Friday. Jelani Friday and B.J. Maxwell will no longer suit up for the Wildcats, said that the two players were dismissed for, quote, violating university policies and behavior inconsistent with the values of the university. It dealt a massive blow to really the entire athletics department, but certainly to men's basketball and fans of men's basketball. It's kind of like seeing your brother like leave like the family and uh, not necessarily like playing wise, but just like our morale because you never want to see like just two brothers that you've been like growing up with the past few years just have to leave uh, something that you all love. And that really hurt us a lot. Because here we are with five games to go in the regular season and a top two seed hanging in the balance and two starters gone just like that. And two days later, we play Southeastern Louisiana. While the Wildcats were still adjusting to the loss of Friday and Maxwell, 
Southeastern Louisiana took full advantage of the new ACU lineup. You know, they'd come in here a couple of days after we lost Jelani and BJ, and they, they punked us. I mean, they just, they ran up and down the floor on us and made us look bad. Neal buries the three as two Wildcats collide. 566 in favor of Southeastern Louisiana, and they have just tightened up the race for the two seed in the South Conference. It's a long week, man. They've been through a lot. Uh, I just I just never thought we, I didn't think we fought tonight like we've been fighting all year. That, that's know? different from effort, yeah. And, yeah, and, uh, you know, it's just, they've had a, you know, it's been tough, man. Gut yeah, punch. gut punch for those guys, man. So uh, this team is now different, and we got to figure it out, you know. And so we got some games here to figure it out. But the one thing we're going to do is fight. I don't know what how the fight's going to end. Yeah. I don't know what the end looks like, but we're going to fight. You know, I remember Joe told me a couple of days later that he'd gotten a text or a conversation with Jay Frank. And, and, and Jay just told him, he said, we're not going to lose again. You know, kind of like I'm going to put us on my shoulders and Jaron and, and Hayden, and, and, we're, and we're not going to. This is not going to end the way that, that a lot of people think it's going to because we lost those two guys. Uh, but there were so many ups and downs within that, that year. And, and, you know, we went through a, a situation where uh, we lost a couple players and, and we needed somebody to step up. And, and Farquhar didn't even hesitate. And we inserted him into that lineup and it was, we didn't lose a step. Daniels wants to run. He's got Farquhar on the left wing and he banks it in. Determined to adapt quickly, senior Hayden Farquhar not only gave the Wildcats the spark they needed, but became one of their main contributors down the stretch. As the seasons progressed, I mean, uh, coaches kept talking to me about, and talking to me about uh, know your role and just keep doing that and you do it the best of your ability and uh, you'll like the outcome. And he was right. Three from Lewis is halfway down. Farquhar the rebound and Gets the end one opportunity. There you go. He uses his motor. Um, he brings a different part of the game than Jelani did. You know, so it really it, it helped us, man, in, in certain situations. Um, defensively, uh, offensively, just a different dynamic, man. So the basket counts from Farquhar. He didn't really have a role on this team his first couple of years, you know. And for him to be able to find a role as a guy to hit a three off the bench, and then he became a starter. And for him to be able to do that was special. Having lost two of their starters with five games to go, they are going to win their third straight game since those two starters were dismissed. With this win, we'll move within a win Saturday against Incarnate Word here or a loss by New Orleans. If either of those two things happens, the Wildcats have the number two seed next week in Katy. Even more than winning the regular season title, as great as that would have been, you wanted to finish first or second because in the Southland Conference, the way it is in women's and men's basketball, if you finish as the one or two seed for the conference tournament, you are exempt straight in to the tournament semifinals, meaning you only have to win two games to make it to the NCAA tournament. As the calendar turned to March, both programs looked to solidify their seeds in the final home game of the season against Incarnate Word on Senior Day. Good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Moody Coliseum for today's contest featuring the Cardinals of UAW and your ACU Wildcats. It didn't feel like it was my last time I was going to play at Moody, and I was just like, I won't ever play here again. And, you know, it kind of hadn't hit me uh, that I wasn't ever going to step foot on Moody again to play. Instead of uh, Senior Day, we called it Sarah Day because she was the only senior in that in our program that year. Uh, she had just gone through so much, and for our team to love on her as much as they did, um, I think she felt that she had left her mark. Sarah is a phenomenal teammate, friend, uh, leader, just on and off the court. She's always smiling, laughing off the court, but on the court, she just has such a, a drive. She's always looking to get better, always making the, make that extra pass. Just phenomenal player, always looking out for us, and that's, that's what a real leader does.
I wasn't as emotional as I thought I was going to be. It was just, I was enjoying the ride. Down court to Williamson in transition, and ACU makes it a 9 nothing run. I think it was um, something, a, a treasure that I get to will always remember and just be a part of like this program, be able to play for this amazing university. For her to come out as one of the most successful, winningest players in ACU history, um, I'm, I'm honored to coach her. I feel, I feel like she was honored um, that day. Following the women's victory, the men were prepared to celebrate their three seniors that had helped build a winning program. I'd never been a part of a group that had seniors that had done it for four years. Um, specifically Hayden Farquhar, Jaron Lewis, and Jalen Franklin. I think it comes back to, to every, and see, when they're walking out there on senior day in that Incarnate Word game, I'm thinking about uh, all the, the times where we, they were playing for nothing. I mean, those guys came here knowing that they had no postseason eligibility. They allowed us to sell them on a vision, on a dream, uh, and that they immediately believed in. It was their, their bond with each other that was so special. It was that they came on board when Abilene had never won in the Division I level. Just the camaraderie they had for each other, the love they had for each other, but then how involved they were in the community. People, the people in the gym that day cared about those guys and they knew who they were. Um, you know, from the SID to the, to the teachers to the, to the random fans that just showed up to every game, they knew who those guys were. Uh, we were able to celebrate uh, all those guys uh, on that day. That class believed in a vision when there was, there, there was no validation to that vision. When you celebrate them before the game was, they turned that vision into a reality. We knew we had a chance at that point, the winningest team in ACU basketball history, um, and they were still chasing that. Uh, Franklin three-pointer, it's good. Shaylen Franklin, the no. senior, brings the Wildcats to their feet on the bench. They've changed the standard to where when they came here, they were not expected to win. But because of that class, and I include Hayden Howell in that class too, but um, now guys come here and they're expected to win. Slammed in! Louie with his first bucket. You know, Jaron Lewis is definitely the um, most impressive student athlete I've ever been around. But you just look at his academics, how he handled himself, and we'll look in 20 years, and Jaron will be way more successful than all the coaches put together. It was a sad night, but it was also a very exciting night because of everything they've done and, and to be able to celebrate those guys. So uh, it was a day I knew it was coming. I didn't want it to come. Uh, I, I remember uh, just being, it was just kind of weird uh, thinking um, everything we've done and that it was over, you know, and, and we basically had a week or two left together. And, um, but it was also a great night to celebrate those guys. Three-pointer on the way. Good by Farquhar. You know, they were leaving our program as men. They were leaving our program in a much uh, better spot. I owe a lot to those guys, you know. I, I owe a lot to every player that's ever played for us here that's helped us build this thing, but that class especially and what they've done for my family and what they've done for myself. Jalen played the game at a different level than anyone that, that I'd seen uh, since I had been here for sure. He's a special, he's a special, special uh, person in our family's life. Um, he came, he came off the floor and I was standing there and I knew he was going to walk over there and he did. And, and um, you know, he just said, I love you and I appreciate everything. And I said, and I just told him I love him and I said, you'll never know how much you've meant to this university and to my family in the last four years. And, and, and I just love it. I, I, I love all, I love all of them. As both teams wrapped up their home finales, Julie Goodenough challenged her team to not only win, 
but to make a statement in their first round matchup against Central Arkansas. I think the first game we played in the tournament against Central Arkansas will be one that I will remember for a long time. Honestly, I was kind of nervous going into that game. I think playing them was the best thing that could have happened because I think it brought a lot of focused energy from our team and it kind of like set us on a mission. I talked to our guards throughout the week preparing to go to the conference tournament about, hey, you know what? We are the best three-point shooting team in the league. Let's go establish a new three-point shooting record. One year earlier, the Sugar Bears ended the Wildcats' season. In 2019, ACU would not only return the favor, they'd do it in dominant fashion. That was a pretty cool game. It was a record-breaking game, and everybody just came out there, and we were all hitting shots. It was just a team. It was a team win. You know, one of those special games where just everything is hitting. That's the ninth three-pointer now for the Wildcats. Of course she did. They're going to break the record of 14, I think, before this gets. That's what their goal was, to break the record. Uh, we make 16 threes out of 35 attempts. Both of those are new tournament records. And for us to do it in the first game was really a big deal against a, a really good defensive Central Arkansas team. Yeah, our players bought into that and just did a tremendous job with it. And for the first time in program history, they will move on to the Southland Conference semifinals. The four seed is still alive in Katy. They collide with the regular season champions, the number one seed Cardinals of Lamar. How much does this kind of like get rid of any of the mirrors that you had going into the Southland Conference? I'm um, going into any tournament, um, you're going to have a lot of nerves, but uh, just getting here and especially having such a great first time, first day performance, uh, it's just really going to fuel us and continue to push us. I think it was really exciting too, seeing everybody come out on the court and play a huge part in this win, and so we're going to have a lot of momentum for the rest of the tournament. Uh, but I think the way we shot the ball today will just uh, give everybody on the team a lot of confidence and the way we played together as a team, regardless of who was on the court, um, should really propel us into a game tomorrow where we're, we're ready to rely on our, our teammates and ready to play as a family. Really, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get ready thank tomorrow. From the Leonard E. Merrill Center in Katy, Texas, welcome to ACU Wildcat Basketball. Today, it's a Southland Conference Women's Basketball Tournament semifinal between the number four seeded ACU Wildcats and the number one seed Lamar Cardinals. Uh, first off, we, I don't think we were scared. We knew that we, when we played them here, we held them to a very close game and we should have won that game as well. Um, and we knew that we could beat them. Just one month earlier, Lamar beat the Wildcats in Moody Coliseum by overcoming a fourth quarter deficit to take hold of the top seed in the conference. We lost to Lamar here by three, and honestly, we, we did that to ourselves. We shot ourselves in the foot in the fourth quarter. They beat us once on our home floor, and I think that that stung pretty bad for us because it was a pretty tight game. And then at the end, like the whole gym was quiet, and all we could hear was them celebrating with their 17th win and their 11th in a row. That was an impressive showing. Yeah, that was, it was a great we, we definitely could have beat them, but we, we were out for blood when we played them. Ball in the air. Off we go from Katy, Texas. In the beginning of the game, we were down, and I was just like, oh, like don't let it be one of these games. Four and a half in the first quarter. A torrent start to the game. 12-2 run for the Cardinals. And Lamar's another great defensive team. So they're okay with giving up 30 points per half. We just didn't get rattled and we never felt like we couldn't win or that it was out of reach. They kept hitting us and hitting us and we're down eight, we're down 10 at one point. They just kept taking a lead and we couldn't really get it under four to six, but we just stayed in it. Closest that ACU's been since the four minute mark of the first quarter. We, we'd call timeouts, like we'd have uh, media timeouts and stuff, and I would just look every one of my teammates in the eye, and it was just like we were there, like we were gonna win this game. We started really getting after on the defensive end, and I really credit our defense with 
the offensive force we became in the, that fourth quarter because when, as we got defensive stops, we immediately went down the floor and hit wide open transition shots. We just started to chip away, and I was like, this is, this is what we've worked so hard for. Like, Mabry three, this is big, that's good. Huge answer. And ultimately, when Barr is their best point guard, when she got in foul trouble, we took advantage of that situation and really took it to him. And we capitalized on that, and we didn't look back once we got the lead. What our team did in the fourth quarter against Lamar was just phenomenal. Led by junior Brianna Wright's 29 second half points and a conference tournament record 16 for 16 from the free throw line, the Wildcats pulled away from the Cardinals. And they'll kick it out. Mabry three, dagger, good! Wow! Oh my! Listen to these fans! I, I don't know how long I'm going to coach, hopefully for a long time. That'll be on the highlight reel when, I'm, when I retire. Abilene Christian 88, Lamar 79. Can you believe it? And the celebration can begin. The Wildcats are going to play for a title. Uh, when I was on the court at the very end of the game, it was just pandemonium. Like, oh my gosh, like we just beat Lamar. Like, it was, I think it just set like a fire under us. Like, we're gonna go win this championship game. It was just one of the coolest momentum games I've ever been a part of. The first Monday of June, our team established our goals for the season, and one was to uh, make it to the championship game and give our chance, our, ourselves a chance to be the first ACU women's basketball team to play in the NCAA tournament. Uh, this really is a family, and uh, I just I love the fact that it's this team, this 18-19 team, that gets to make history and, and take the ACU women's program to the, the conference tournament championship. With the women's title game spot secured, the men's quest for a similar run would begin later that night against Southeastern Louisiana. Welcome to ACU Wildcat basketball tonight. It's a Southland Conference men's basketball tournament game between the number two seed ACU Wildcats and the third seeded Southeastern Louisiana University Lions. Good evening, everyone. I'm Grant Boone alongside Zach Carlisle. Just after not making it to Katy the previous year, we were just really excited and really just eager and hungry to show everybody in the conference that we can go and compete. You know, but when we got there, I mean, the atmosphere was just amazing. You know, seeing all the student sections, the bands, like the cheerleaders, everything. It was just, this is what you're playing for. 56 years after ACU helped found the Southland Conference, they will play in the Southland Tournament for the first time. Are you ready? It was really, I was really nerve-wracked. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to feel. As just all my emotions are coming out all at once. I just haven't been to that stage yet. It kind of felt like we were the underdog, and we weren't, but it really felt like that. And so I think it was good that we had that attitude because we got to came we came into the game more with a chip on our shoulder than just trying to to, to be safe and protect. Drives, kicks into the corner. Ricks rises up for a corner three. Hello, and kicks out to Lewis for three. Yes. It was halfway down, tipped by Lewis to Daniels, goes up off balance, shot rolls around and in, Daniels. A steal by Lewis, chases it into the front court. Lewis goes up and lays it in. It's an 11 point lead at 27 to 16. Nine turnovers and 11 points off of them for ACU. And the Wildcat faithful going crazy. After an up and down first half, ACU took a 10 point lead into the locker room but they knew that the Lions would not go away without a fight. Something we were gonna have to deal with, especially if we got a lead, we knew that was something our coaches were preaching in timeouts and something I was saying to the guys, they're not gonna go away, we gotta keep pushing, we gotta finish them all. Rises up for three, Veal, yes! Marlon Veal. The momentum swung early in the second half and the Lions cut the lead to five but ACU would get an unexpected spark off the bench from redshirt freshman Tobias Cameron. 
from Greenwood. Back it goes to Greenwood, top of the key. Doesn't take the three, drives in, charges over Cameron! Tobias Cameron, the Kiwi, to the rescue! It just, it just shows that um, everyone is more important. In this, uh, everyone has an important role in the team. And uh, he stepped up when he needed it, and so did everyone else in the, on the team. So that was definitely a, a spark for our team. He crosses half court, met by Von Julian. Deep right wing is Jay Frank. Whistles it to Farquhar. Three pointer on the way. Rims the basket. No good. Cameron gets his hand on it. Cameron gets the rebound. Cameron is fouled, and Tobias Cameron has come to life. <laughs> the biggest moment of his red shirt freshman season. That offensive rebound he got saved us. Probably the defining moment in that game was that offensive rebound. He gave us a uh, second chance at it, and uh, we uh, capitalized on it. To the basket, drives, scoop with the right hand, rolls around, and it's oh! in! Franklin with a finger roll. It's a three-point lead. 56-53. That's as good as it gets. Deep right wing, one dribble, skips it down low to Greenwood, catch it back in. Way too easy. Greenwood has 10 now. ACU down by two. Daniels to Ricks. Quick three-pointer on the way. It's good! Ricks buries the long three-pointer. It's a one-point lead for ACU. Wing. Brewer defending Franklin. Drive to the bucket. Hangs in the air. It's good! Good by Jay Frank in a three-point lead. With under two minutes left, another freshman, Damian Daniels, had a chance to extend the lead to three. One more free throw for the freshman. High off the oh, rim and it falls in. <laughs> ACU by five with 42.2 seconds to go. One of the key moments that stuck out for me was Damian stepping up at the end of the game, hitting those big free throws and kind of closing the game out. So I feel like it was a big moment for him and a big moment for the team just to see him step up. Like we felt like we could follow him at that point. 1.4 seconds to go. Lennox runs the baseline. He finds Daniels and a foul from behind with 0.8 seconds to go and Daniels will go to the line to shoot two. And Daniels hasn't missed at the line tonight <laughs> with 0.8 seconds to go and no timeouts for Southeastern. They need a miracle. Dribble, spin, free throw, good. Oh man. Inbound Greenwood to Julian. This will count if it goes. It is off the backboard, no good. ACU wins. The Wildcats win and live to fight another day. 69-66, they hang on for one of the biggest wins in program history. Man, we ain't done yet. Everybody got right, huh? 40 right. more minutes. Remember, we'll get off your feet. We'll get back, back to personnel. 40 more minutes. Everybody got it? Yeah, boys. Four more minutes, man. Let's go. Turn my feet. I'm going to see what the baby is. Put my seat. We ain't done yet, boys. Coming off the emotional semifinal victory, ACU was in the driver's seat to accomplish a feat that had never been achieved in the school's 100 plus year history qualify for the NCAA tournament. Good evening, everyone. I'm Grant Boone alongside Zach Carlisle. Welcome to Wildcat basketball and a night unlike any other in ACU athletics history. Tonight, with a victory, the ACU men's basketball team can go into uncharted territory. They can go to the big dance, the biggest of big dances, to the NCAA tournament with a victory. Uh, so the senior mindset was really just, we're this close, this is what we've been working for, we can't give it up. I remember three times saying to them all, I don't want this to be my last game. Like, I want to play another game with you, I want to do it in the big stage. Like the look in their eyes when, they, when I said that, it was just kind of like, okay, let's go. Like, let's go to war. Right wing pass goes to Ricks, lob for Farquhar, catch on the baseline, banks it in! Up the left side of the court he comes, underneath to Farquhar, catch and a lay-in! Hayden Farquhar! Left hand jump stop, banks it in, Louie with a bucket. Here comes New Orleans the other way. Rosser charges over Farquhar, the big fella. Throws it away, no back door to Franklin. Goes in with a one hand slam. Franklin throws it down. Superman. 
guy jumped the pass and I went back and Trey was like going back, he was like pointing like back door. So he gave it to me and I went up and dunked it and I was like, oh yeah, it's on popping now. 40 to 29 in favor of ACU at halftime. So I felt really good at halftime going in. Um, we didn't have to make a whole lot of adjustments. I knew our guys knew at halftime that this was the moment. This was the time we had worked so hard for, for some of us for six years and some of them for four years for this moment, for this last 20 minutes. And uh, I just remember walking out at halftime and feeling really, really good about where our team was. The privateers fought back to within eight, but ACU answered behind the strength of their three seniors. To Lewis, right block, back to the basket, one dribble, two, jumper good. Louis got ten. He, Soft touch with the right hand. Yeah, he kicked it out the first time, reestablished. Do you come down to the final couple of minutes of the game, and ACU has a solid lead, but they haven't put the game away. Well, then Farquhar. ACU with the ball. They took 45 seconds off the clock. Under three minutes to go. Ten on the shot clock. Daniels screen from Parkour. So we were getting, we ran our uh, play and it wasn't working out. And D drove. He went back to the top of the key and he drove to the left side of the rim. And I was just going to peel right behind him to get my, because my man helped up. So I just peeled up to the top of the key and D found me. In the paint, kicks it out to Farquhar. Three pointer from straight on. Yes! Yes! Farquhar! Takes the lid off for three. It's a 15 point lead with 2.40 to go. I think that was the first three I made all, all game or all tournament. And then after that, I was ready to shoot another one. Down low for Rosser. Kicks it out into the corner. Robinson three. No good, Farquhar rebound! And gets it away to Franklin, 2.25 to go. So when uh, I got the ball, I seen Fark. Um, I was like, oh man, he just hit one. I'm gonna get it to him, gotta get it to him, he's wide open. What was going through my head when I was in the corner when I caught it, I didn't know if I was gonna shoot it or not, so I hesitated. And he caught it and he stared at him. I was like, man, what are you doing, shoot the ball! And then I looked at the big guy, and he was too far in the paint, so I had to shoot it. Gets it to Farquhar. Wide open. Corner three. Yes! Farquhar! 18-point lead with 2 12 to go. They can feel it all over ACU Nation. And I was so excited. I gave him a high five, and everything was laughing. I was like, oh, man, it's over popping. I was in a zone and just running and just fist pumping the whole way down. And at that moment, I was like, oh yeah, man, this, this, this is about it. I mean, this, this is what we've been waiting on and this is what we've been working hard for. So we just want to close this game out. Then I looked over to the fans and it was, it was bumping, it was going crazy. Everybody was falling out of their seats. No one was sitting, everybody was standing. And it was really cool. I mean, I looked at my dad, he was sitting up in the stands and I knew, I knew we were going to the NCAA tournament. And I, I mean, I'm getting chills talking about legit, like goosebumps. To see Hayden Farquhar uh, step up and, and bury the shots that essentially ended it. And it, it, was, it was just a moment that, uh, you know, is, is storybook. Timeout, New Orleans! As the ACU fans erupt. I remember, you know, the timeout that New Orleans called, and I remember taking a step back um, out of the timeout. Our team was there, and we usually meet with coaches, and I was facing our crowd, and, um, you know, just to look uh, on that, that whole side and just to go down and see the faces uh, of the crowd and what it meant to everybody and, and to guys like you that, that were alumni and guys like myself and how far we have come uh, to that moment. And I knew what that was gonna do for our university. I knew what that moment was gonna do for our basketball program. I knew right then that a lot of things were gonna change. And the freshman who hit 10 of 10 free throws the other night, working around Robinson, kicks it out. 100 seconds to go up 18. Lewis hands it off to Daniel. You know, sports is a lot of things, but one thing it does is unite. It's a uniter, I think. And I think in that moment, you all realize that whether they're from Arkansas or Florida, 
whether they were from Throckmorton, Texas or Oklahoma City, we were all AC Wildcats. And it was awesome. And here go the seniors. Franklin comes out. Farquhar comes out. Lewis comes out. But when we came out the floor, it meant a lot to me because, um, well, we've been through these four years, you know. Uh, Coach G was the first person I heard, and then it was Coach T. I picked him up and everything. I don't think some people know exactly what we went through this year. This is probably uh, the roughest year we've been through as a team, but at the same time, it's been the most rewarding. I'm not going to lie to you. I broke down crying. Uh, I was just so joyful that ended, we ended it right way. With the shot clock off, you can stand up. Because ACU is going dancing. Abilene Christian to the NCAA tournament. Winners of the Cell Phone Conference Tournament. And then me and Jaren just hold it up with Paul. And that was the that was when I knew that we were champions, you know. And that meant a lot for us, and uh, it meant a lot for ACU and this um, program, you know. And seeing everybody at that point from the stands come onto the court, everybody's congratulating us, everybody's telling us good job and everything. We get to cut the net, so that was just something huge it's something we had dreamed of as a team that was like our main goal and just to finally like accomplish that was huge for us uh, but tonight man I'm just so happy for these seniors man Jaron Lewis Jay Frank and Farquhar uh, for, to be able to experience this man our program's come a long ways because of those three getting a hug my teammates I hugged them first obviously and that was uh, hugging Trey hugging Jay Frank hugging Paul Jaron the seniors Farquhar um, that's, that's a moment I'll never forget, and I don't think it'll ever be a blur to me. I'll, I'll, very, I'll remember it very vividly. The biggest night in the history of ACU athletics, the Wildcats win. They finish 27-6, and six, and now the confetti can fall because ACU is going to the biggest dance of them all. So it was just fun, like seeing everybody happy, dancing, and it was crazy. So we were dancing for a while, waiting for Coach G. He took a while to come in. In the locker room after uh, seeing some uh, some guys get out of their element <laughs> in, uh, uh, in, in their dance moves. <laughs> Every five seconds, somebody else comes in and we're like, oh, we thought it was him. And then Coach G comes in and we all just went wild. those players in that locker room and, and uh, I'm going to sit back and watch. Uh, they have no idea what's about to happen. Let's be honest. They don't, man. Uh, they answered the, your questions here, but uh, they, 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 their picture are going to ride of their life, you know, and I'm excited for it. I'm sure you guys grew up watching Selection Sunday. Mm -hmm. How is it going to feel tomorrow watching, knowing that you're going to be a part of it and your name is going to get called? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So there's just so much anticipation behind it. I mean, we had a great showing out there at the club level of the football stadium. That, that was amazing. Just to have the fans um, and friends and family uh, be there, we felt the buzz in the city. Just like the, city, the community of Abilene just felt like they all benefited from it, like they were with us. When we first got to the selection show, I know a lot of us weren't expecting to have 
as many people there as really turned out. So that was really a nice surprise seeing all the support that came to the selection show. We sat front row, right in front of the TV, and all the fans were behind us. Coach G was sitting to our left a couple rows back with his uh, family. And so whenever the selection Sunday started, we were, we were nervous. We didn't know what we were going to get. We, we didn't think we were going to get a 16. We knew we were probably going to get a 15, but we were hoping for a 14. It was, it was crazy. Knowing that your name is going to be called, just kind of sitting back all giddy and anxious, waiting for it to be called, it was, it was awesome. And I don't know, like, the process they go through choosing it. So I remember Duke popped up first. And honestly, I'm like, ah, don't let this be the way we go out. Please don't let this be the way we go out. Everybody thought we were going to play Duke. Uh, I, mean, I remember uh, our fans at... Uh, we won, uh, we played in New Orleans at the championship. I had signs saying we want Duke and this and that. <laughs> we thought, like, people were saying we want Duke, so I kind of thought we would get them. So that was kind of a relief a little bit, but. <laughs> I take a big sigh of relief. Honestly, I think everybody on our team did. I don't care what anybody says. Some, I heard a lot of deep breaths after, <laughs> after uh, Duke's team was called. I knew we weren't going to be a 16, but you know you would hear oh, oh like when they when they would uh, show it. Yeah, it was a little nerve wracking at times. I think you saw like in the crowd whenever uh, we thought our name was going to get picked and it didn't. You hear the sighs and the gas. First 15 seed goes, we didn't get it. The second one goes, we didn't get it. The third one goes, we didn't get it. So. Whenever that number two, Kentucky, came up, we had a pretty good idea of who we were going to play. The 15th seed. <laughs> it, it felt like a dream, you know? You're on Selection Sunday, and you see your name pop up. And it doesn't, it doesn't feel real. Yeah, what was it like seeing your name in the Ah, I mean. <laughs> when it finally popped up, it, instantly everybody jumped up. I mean, it was just overwhelming because it, it, it felt like it was set in, but then it didn't when another moment would happen. And so in that moment, I was like, dang, now it's sitting in. Like, we're really going. You can't describe the feeling. I mean, we were all so excited you know, to play Kentucky. Just that going up on a screen, us playing Kentucky was a really cool, cool experience and memory that I always cherish forever. The men now knew their destination. Back in Katy, the women had their chance to make school history against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. The championship game was awesome because, respectfully, because I love the Corpus Christi staff and their players, I knew from the get-go we were gonna win the game. I knew that our girls would fuel that fire, but Corpus, Playing Corpus, I couldn't imagine a better setup for our girls to play in a championship game. Welcome to the 2019 Southland Conference Tournament Championship game. It's we watched the men play in our hotel the night before, and so to see their celebration, we, we, we wanted that. Uh, I know I did, especially. It's my last, it was my last year, and so I was like, I have to go out with the bang. Gonna drive right, looking on two defenders, and goes off the glass for two. Slides through, kicks it out. Mabry three left wing, yes. Michaela May. Gosh, we had all the confidence you can imagine after the first half. Golightly, top of the key, her three is pure. What a start for Dominique. Go we had done everything against every one of their defenses that just completely just like, slashed through anything they could have done. We, we were getting layups and wide open threes. AC runs quickly on offense, left wing three, Mabry splashes at home. 
What a half. I, like, even at halftime, we never really felt comfortable because we knew that this was a team that was very capable of making a run and coming back, and they're a team that was just going to keep on fighting. We go back out, we build our lead up to 24 points, and then it was like the wheels just fell off. Turn, spins, and scores. Now Bryant, 15-foot jumper, that's good. The ACU just, they, they have no answer for transition right now. We were sitting over there giving everything we could possibly think of, and nothing was working. Like, we're getting wide open shots, they aren't going in. Corpus is having shots roll around the rim and fall in. Like, it was just like slipping away. We, um, we were linking arms, they are crossing our fingers, you know, cheering on our teammates. We just, it's a whole bunch of emotions running around at one time. We're like, oh my gosh, we're tied. Okay, now we're up. Storm in a final two and a half. And now the pass taken away by Serrata. She's going to turn and lay it in. The Islanders are feeling it. We just all kept looking at each other in the huddle and even Coach Goodenough, we were like, we're winning this game. Whatever we have to do, we're winning this game. And you could just feel it like our team, they were like, we got this. I mean, we know it's getting ugly, but we've got this. Driving right, rise and fire, short, no good, loose ball, rebound, jump ball. ACU's got the possession arrow. Avery gonna look, past Tibbs, Williamson gathers, scoots to Duque, who leaves it in for two with one minute to go. Never once did I think that we were gonna lose that game. This one is gigantic to try to go up two. Second free throw is no good as well, but Duque the rebound! Eight seconds, free right is fouled at half court, that is incredible! The moment Lexi got it, I was like, ball, ball. And then I was thinking in my head, where's Bree? Had to get her the ball. I just knew that she would be the one that we want the ball to get into her hands. 6.8 left, ACU up two, 68-66. Second free throw is good. Three point game, timeout, Corpus Christi. They'll put it into their front court with 6.8 to go. We are up three, so if they hit a three, the worst case situation, we we're gonna go to overtime. We're less than seven seconds away from crowning a champion. Someone's gonna cut down the nets. 6.8 seconds. Booth inbounds, gets it to Young. She drives, kicks. Alexis Bryant for three, no good. Loose ball. The putback is good at the buzzer, but it doesn't matter! We are dancing! The buzzer goes off and you run from, from the bench, you go to your teammates, you're hugging, you know, you're crying, you're just super excited, you're champion. Just, I was overwhelmed with emotions, I'm still kind of reeling from, I just, I don't even know how to describe the excitement that we had. And then everybody just like went crazy and I was like, wow, like, we just won this game, it was crazy. I started crying immediately, <laughs> but as, as did most of us. As soon as I went over and like hugged my teammates, like I just tears, just crying, like so happy. I mean, it was completely surreal. You know, when the game's over, we're the conference champions, and it was just uh, about the most awesome feeling that I, that I have had as a head coach out on the court. Coach good enough, 25 years, never been to the big dance. Here you go, what do you think? I'm just so excited, I'm so proud of our team. We could care less who we're going to play. This is such a big accomplishment for this group. And, and now Sarah Williamson has three Division I conference championships. What a great year as Sarah has had. And we're going to continue having fun in the dance next week. It's a Texas Tuesday. And for the second time in two days, Abilene Christian has a champion. The women's basketball team is the Southland Tournament champions for the first time ever. It's just an amazing victory for our team, and we had been working for that all season long. I know that every, every team says that's their ultimate end goal, but for us to finally like achieve it, it was exciting um, and something I'll always remember. Our two teams were playing two of the preeminent teams of college basketball, and you could feel that on our campus. You know, we had the, the pep rally, basically the pep rally, on Monday in chapel. And it was bonkers in there. We have celebrated a lot of great stuff in, in, in Moody over the years. 
nothing compares to that. Chapel was super fun. Like it was double the celebration, you know, both teams won. And so it was like, we were like celebrities on campus. Everyone's like congratulating you. You know, they're talking about you during chapel. Everyone's cheering you, you get a standing ovation. It felt like everywhere, like just walking to the store, going into chapel and getting recognized there. It was just really cool. And like, I just realized how much bigger the championship was than just our team and like myself. It's like, wow, like this is really like bringing the community together. Never felt that type of buzz on campus before. Like professors would like give like a round of applause when we, when we when someone was walking. I was just like, this is crazy. Like we haven't even got to we haven't even like played the game yet in the tournament. People act like we won the championship. It's why we went Division One. Trying to embrace culture and community and your university all in one, and feeling like everybody played a part, whether it's a small part or a big part, in winning a championship. For us and the guys to do it in the same year was incredible and then getting to experience it with the ACU community um, was kind of the icing on the cake. And we thank you for your support throughout the course of the season. Thank you for cheering on these young ladies and young men that have worked their guts out this year to get where they are. Uh, once a Wildcat, always a Wildcat, and we're all champions today. We've got an unbelievable week ahead of us and my promise to everybody out here all you students really just to the students uh, the next three days we're gonna go sell your story we're selling your story to the world the next three days it couldn't be any better man we're playing Kentucky everybody's watching Kentucky everybody's always watched Kentucky little old Abilene Christians gonna get heard about in the next three days man so we look forward to telling your story it's for you guys we love you guys and uh, appreciate it I feel like so many people got to enjoy that moment and it wasn't just a basketball moment. It was, it was a community and an ACU moment. The next day, following a campus-wide celebration, the men headed to the airport for yet another set of firsts that no player on the team had experienced before. Their own charter plane to Jacksonville. Getting on the plane, we had never been through that before. We never uh, had our own charter plane. And then just to see how many people um, actually came to support, I think that kind of set the tone for how the trip was going to be. Like we knew we had support just going along with it. You know, we show up, we land in Jacksonville, police escorts there to meet us. I was like, that's for us, you know, because we never had that. I was like, okay, yeah, it's here. <laughs> like, that's all I needed for it to sit in was just seeing that. We're not used to that. It, it felt, it, we're not used to it. Maybe those big schools are, but for us, that was something very special. It was crazy because uh, we've never really practiced, like had a practice in front of such many people and cameras. But um, it was definitely just good to see that atmosphere and see how um, people like uh, Kentucky and Duke and all them, that's how they basically practice every game. So. Coach G didn't want to change anything. He just wanted to go out there and do what we always done. You know, we didn't do anything fancy. We did the dive on the ball drill, you know, coach got in it, which is, I mean, they weren't showing off or anything. That's just what we do at practice. It was, it was really fun to be out there. The energy, like, we just had a whole bunch of energy and we just had fun. Like, Coach G diving on the floor for basketball. I was like, no other coach did that. Like, and that's what he does. That's who he is. He wasn't showing out for nobody. Like, that's who coach is. <laughs> Colty, Colty, say hi. Uh, Clay, say hi. It's your, it's your vlog? What this up? It's my vlog, man. What up, vlog? Fart, say hi. What's up? Future generations. After their practice, the seniors headed off to meet the media. It was a lot, it was a lot different than just going back to the media room here and just standing and giving our uh, pre-game or our post-game comments. All right, we got the players from Abilene Christian. Whenever we get out there, you just look, there's a uh, oh, Max Preston sitting front row, and there's a lot of other reporters. Um, Jacksonville um, asked me uh, about my town and stuff, and I just tell them about that. But yeah, it was it was really cool just to go up there with Jay Frank and uh, Jaren. 
My mom called me after the interview. She was like, you know, you was on TV, right? I was like, I was like, what? what? She was like, yeah. In the locker room, the whole team was watching us on TV and seeing what we were saying. So they videoed it, and I got to watch it afterwards. And it was really nice. And it was a nice moment just to go up there with the three seniors and talk about the team. Most of the time, media day is won by the players. But surprisingly, this year, the headliner was ACU's head coach, Joe Golding. I've got Coach Golding here from Abilene Christian. If you have a question, as before, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. And we'll start right. we'll get to but did y'all know that Coach G was blowing up? Yeah, yeah, we knew. <laughs> There's no way we couldn't know. But When Jaron told me he got an ESPN notification on his phone that says AC Miss Bethel Coach Joe Golding, I, that, that, that alone already is like, you don't ever see that. It was an incredible embrace that we had the last eight seconds. Unfortunately, I ripped my pants. So I get back to Abilene. I, we were in the locker room when he was doing the interview, and I saw him uh, say the, 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 no, the notorious moment where he said he had the hole in his pants. Uh, I'm coaching them all in my, in my baby blue suit, and I'm going to have a hole in my butt, man. So it is what it is, man. Uh, we're going to be who we are. Um, and uh, go out there and, and uh, embrace it. Uh, I asked him when he came back and he was like, are you serious? He was like, yeah, man, we're, we're, we're not going to change. It was hard to stay off the media seeing something. Like I saw him Snapchat the next day, Instagram, Twitter. All my friends were sending it to me like, he, he blew up for sure. I, again, I was like, that's who he is. Like, he don't need to change. Coach, we appreciate your time. Good luck to you. You got him, my man. Appreciate it. Jeff Goodman, man. And so I was like, yeah, that's... That's totally Coach G right there. As the matchup with Kentucky drew a day closer, the men focused on what got them to this point, just being themselves. I can tell you this, and it might not change anything, man. I know there's nerves and stuff, but at the end of the day, man, do me one favor. Just be you. Just be us. Everybody got me? Just be you, and, and just be us. Right? Laugh! Take your cool jackets off. There ain't nothing cool about us. Hell, I'm walking out there with a hole in my butt. It is what it is. We are who we are. Take your cool jackets off and be you. Be us. Does everybody understand? Yes, sir. All right? Being cool has never been us. It ain't what we're about. You guys understand that? So take it off and be you. And don't be afraid to be you. All right? I love you guys. Let's go. As Wildcat fans finished filling out their brackets in Jacksonville, back in Abilene, the student body flocked to Moody Coliseum to watch their team on national TV. Everyone was going. Like there wasn't anyone you talked to who, who said they were. No, nah, I'm going to watch it at my house. It was. It, it was. The question wasn't, "Are you going?" It's, "What time are you getting there?" The moment that stood out for me was looking outside those doors and seeing just a thousand people lined up, ready to come into Moody Coliseum. Uh, and it's not, it's not a picture you get every day. Looking outside the windows and seeing that line stretch all the way across the campus center was both um, amazingly encouraging and terrifying. Okay, yeah, that, that was crazy. When I showed up, the line was all the way back, like past gate of fountain. And that was really cool to just see how many people were excited and willing to come to watch the game. I'm sitting at my seat before our game starts and I'm just looking through Facebook and people are showing, people are posting pictures from Moody and what the wait was outside and how long they waited to get in and what it was like inside Moody and it, I've, I've never seen it that full, you know. To see that kind of reaction, you know, the excitement level for that was exactly what Alan Ward said it would be. I, not, nobody here has experienced that before. And so, I don't know, there's a lot of pride too, just like knowing my guys are out there playing and they're playing against some of the baddest basketball players out there. And, and to watch them go toe to toe with them was, was pretty awesome. Heading to the uh, arena, I think a lot of them, a lot, a lot of it, the nerves hit a lot of people. From Vistar Veterans Memorial Arena, 
in Jacksonville, Florida. Welcome to ACU Wildcat basketball. Tonight, it's a first round NCAA tournament game between the Abilene Christian University Wildcats and the Wildcats of the University of Kentucky. The 30 minute mark came around, we went out to the court. Kentucky's already out there. We're running onto the court and we just, I just look at Kentucky and I said, whoa, they're huge, they're athletic. But um, like just, just looking across, I'm like, man, these dudes are big. They weren't that big on film. Go back in the locker room, get our uh, speech. Coach Go and said, guys, we're here, we've made it. We're, we just got to finish the fight now. Uh, stay composed uh, and just go out there and give it your all. There's no doubt in his mind that we we had a chance to win. I made sure to take um, to take about 30 seconds to like let it sink in. Just kind of let my nerves calm down. Uh, whenever we went out there first. And we've gone from getting our butt kicked in Iowa and at Stephen F. Austin and not having a prayer and not knowing if this was ever going to work. And we're about to walk out on the floor and play Kentucky on national television in the NCAA tournament. How cool is this? As the Wildcats come out onto the court, here we go. We've waited a long time, a hundred years of basketball at Abilene Christian University. Never before have they taken this stage. What I'll probably remember is a, a tip going against a 6'11 dude, trying to get a tip at the biggest stage. I didn't think that was even possible. E.J. Montgomery will jump center with Hayden Farquhar. And from Jacksonville, we are underway. Hayden Farquhar wins the tip. That was probably the highlight of my game. When Fark hit that, hit his first, hit, hit our first bucket. Yeah, that's, that's the time I remember. Um, that was a very special moment. Fall away. Yes, Farquhar. There you go. Puts ACU on the board with 16, 20 to go in the first. A three pointer. It's eight to three, Kentucky. Line in the left wing. Five on the shot clock to Franklin. Rises up for three. Yes. Hey, you just heard the ACU crowd just. Like, it was loud, you were like, ah, like, hey, yeah, we here. It was really cool playing there in front of thousands of people. Uh, it was just, it was just different for us. We were uh, coming from the Southland Conference. We're not used to playing in huge arenas like that. So that was really cool for us to experience, really cool for us to be out there. I think everybody calmed down whenever, and like I said, in the middle of the, the first half, and that's whenever we all started going, and Jaron had him a heck of a game. When he started hitting, he wouldn't miss him after that. Just seeing the seniors producing that game, and like, that made me just want to keep fighting. Out of the game comes Jalen Franklin, this Jaron Lewis, and Hayden Farquhar. The three seniors who transformed this ACU basketball program. Just walking off the court for the last time with, uh, with uh, ACU across my chest uh, was very emotional. And just to compete with my friends and my, my, my brothers, you know. At the end of the day, just knowing Everything we did paid off, and we got a chance to put ACU on the map. So that's just probably another thing I'm going to think about down the road, just like we're the group that did it. We accomplished our goal. We put ACU on the map. You've changed this program forever. You're going to be celebrated the rest of your life, man. You're the first, man. We'll never have there never be another first. You just played Kentucky. 
in March Madness. But I'm so proud of you, man. I love you more, man, than I did before the game. I just love you. I love this group, man. I'll never go forget it. It's just good to be able to put yourself in that conversation. Like It doesn't even sound like real when you say it, like Abilene Christian University versus Kentucky, but at the same time, it did actually happen, and I'll be able to say that for the rest of my life. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're joined by Abilene Christian head coach Julie Goodenough. Coach, do you have an opening statement? Gosh, we are just so excited to be here. Um, it's a privilege to uh, represent Abilene Christian University in the NCAA tournament. The NCAA tournament was the most first-class event that I've ever been a part of. Um, as a coach, as a player, um, everything was to a T. Baylor was phenomenal um, as hosts. Um, everyone that we met with the NCAA, the NCAA was like spot-on professional. Um, it was an amazing experience um, just to be an event um, in an atmosphere like they brought. Me, Bree, Dom, and well, the junior class, we had played Baylor uh, my sophomore and their freshman year, so we weren't going into it nervous or anything like that. We've had experience playing on their court in Waco and against the team, against that team. And so um, I don't think nerves were a factor, but we just, we knew what we had to do uh, to prep for Baylor and we did that. Uh, Coach Gunnar told us that we executed our scout perfectly, what we wanted to do. We weren't afraid going into it. All right. Hey, this is about you bringing the best version of yourself to this platform because you earned it. You deserve to be here. That's why we're here today. Everything you've been doing since we became a team back in June earned you a spot on this platform today, okay? And we're just asking you to be the best version of yourself. Be godly women striving for excellence. All right, let's get it done. Team first wins on three, own it on six. One, two, three. Team first wins. One, two, three. Team first wins. Four, five, seven. Own it. Yay. And you got about two minutes if you want to take a couple extra shots, about two minutes. It was just so exciting and we were all on just such a high from winning the tournament and just so grateful to be in the tournament. You know, our game plan was like, you know what, like this is a great team, but we're going to scout them like anybody else and we're going to go in there and give them our best shot and just enjoy being there. And so it was really neat. But I will tell you one thing that you need to control. You need to control the energy that our fans exert on you today. That's on you. What you bring, they're going to return back to you. They will bless you with whatever you give them today. Give them a show. Like it was so unbelievable. Like you see it on TV, but to actually be there and to play against the number one team in the nation and just to see all the like our fans and even the Baylor fans, like I was just like taken back at first whenever I walked out and I was like, these people are here to watch us play. The first thing we saw walking towards like our bench to get into our layup lines was just a sea of purple, like in the front row up through the top. And it was just wow, you're just smiling. It was just wow, like we are here, like we've done this. And it was just so cool to be a part of that moment. Yeah. 
but I have never been in a place like that, that loud. I could barely hear my teammates next to me talking, and we were yelling at each other. Finished. We had so much fun. We were just excited about the experience to be there, to play in the NCAA tournament, because that was our ultimate goal. This experience was like something that, as a little girl, I've always dreamed of. You know, uh, playing basketball growing up, you're just always like, wow, I really just want to go to the NCAA tournament. So being able to make like a dream actual reality, like it's a great experience and it's something I'm going to always remember. Like even during the game, like we got down kind of fast and stuff, but like bad things that happened or great things that happened, and I was just smiled through it. I was like, wow, this is the coolest thing ever. Like I'm playing against Kalani Brown. She's going to go into the WNBA. She's 6'8", and like ACU is here playing them, and people are watching this like throughout all of the U.S. Off the screen. To be like on that stage and that platform yes, to represent our school out. and um, the people here was just so amazing. Like growing up, you always, as a basketball player, you always watch March Madness every year, and it was just, it was insane. That experience, like there were so many fans, and there was so many for us. I'd never dreamed that we'd have so many ACU fans there. And it was just crazy, like even being down by someone, like we didn't care, like we all had smiles on our faces the whole time. Just to be there was all that mattered to us, because we, de we deserved to be there. Rise is won, not just the Baylor fans, but the Abilene Christian fans also giving their squad a standing ovation as they got into their first NCAA tournament game. They win it 95-38, another One thing that y'all probably don't remember and no one out there remembers either, you were picked to finish sixth in the Southland Conference this year and you just played in the first NCAA tournament, the first one that ACU has ever had a team play in. So you have so much to be proud of uh, for this season and I am so proud to be your head coach and um, those people out there love you guys. I mean, we had like a thousand fans here today that just came to support you knowing the odds were huge stacked against us tonight. And so um, I, I don't ever plan like a last game speech or anything because I always feel like we're supposed to be winning. Um, I just, I, I'm, I'm sad that it's over, but I'm pretty overwhelming with pride for you. And that's, that's how I feel right now. I'm so proud of you guys. Team first wins on three, own it on six. One, two, three. Team first wins. Four, five, six. Own, own it. it. I think the legacy that they're both going to leave is that it can be done here. Now the expectation is, hey, we need to go do this again. And there will never be another first. There will be other ACU teams that make the NCAA tournament, we hope, soon. But there'll never be another first. And you never forget the first. I can only imagine what kind of trajectory this is going to have on ACU women's basketball as a whole, or ACU men's basketball, or ACU sports as a whole. For all of it, getting to showcase the ACU brand so early in Division I, I just feel like these players, they've set a foundation of success and now that's all ACU women's basketball knows. You know, I, I tell anybody who will listen that I have the greatest coaching job in America, I, and I truly believe that. And to be able to be the head coach to lead this school into the first NCAA tournament on the women's side is um, it's just such an honor and it's a blessing. And I'll be grateful to this 18-19 group uh, for the rest of my coaching career.
I think their legacy will always be remembered as uh, the first to ever do it. They built this program in the Division I model. For me personally, I owe everything to those guys. There were some tough times in this program. There was times when people didn't believe in Joe Golding. There was times that people didn't believe in the direction that this program was going, and those guys never quit on me. I think it's an incredible legacy and one that never needs to be forgotten. What they did to elevate not just their basketball team, but, but to elevate the university and put it on a national map in the minds of some people for the very first time. And there are people now who know what ACU stands for, who didn't before. This was so much more than our team or basketball. I mean, this was a celebration for ACU, for the big country, for um, ACU fans all over the world. So it's, it's a lot bigger than just me and our team and uh, just really, really blessed and, and feel like it's a privilege to have been a part of it. People always ask you, like, what, do you, what kind of legacy do you want to leave? And we want to leave the legacy that those who stay will be champions. And I have been here for four years, and I've won a championship three out of those four years. And so Coach Gunnell is right. Um, those who stay will be champions. You know, there's only one, one team that gets to do it the first time. You know, there'll, there'll be more after us, but there's something special about the first time. There always is.